Hello, horse players. Hey, Oaklawn cappers. Uh, yesterday was a muddy day. I woke up in the morning from the previous day. I was getting vitamin D. I was getting sun sunlight on the back, uh, looking at a lake and catching rays. And then I woke up the next morning. I had gigantic snowflakes. I thought I was back in Wisconsin. And then it turned into rain. And I didn't look at the weather report. And I figured, I'm not throwing you under the bus, Marco, but come on, you're local. I would have hoped you would have saw the weather report and said something. <laughs> I didn't care for mud. Uh, the track's going to be muddy today. Might dry out later. Um, but nonetheless, it's going to be kind of muddy. We got... Uh, yeah. I don't know how much it's gonna dry out. It doesn't look like a lot of sun today. So, but as they run on it, you know, it might kick up some dirt and track her yeah. over it. And... Well, it's gonna be muddy. It's sloppy now. It's sloppy now. We got off the phone with uh, our trainer, one of our trainers here. Um, and we scratched the horse today in the fifth race. Look for an easier spot. For that horse rap a tat tat and uh you know we have a stakes race today that we'll talk about we both landed on that horse i saw and we have a nice trip note on it and um i don't know let's see what we can do do today our roi is not doing great we can make that up really quick uh yesterday's card didn't help me you did pretty good you hit a few winners uh nothing big and a a runner up there were some price plays obviously with the mud and kicking myself in the butt for not looking at that weather report because i might have had one of them um and i didn't make that mistake today i've got a pick five we'll scroll on the bottom of the ticket or the ticker here and i think we should dive into the first race let's roll yeah tell me uh why don't you start off Okay, so the five horse uh, superhero, superhero. That's a maiden main race. Kylie Jordan one for thirty five. Tim Dixon not doing too well. Um, it's a uh, third fourth race. Adding Lasix. I think this horse is going to be in the lead. Um, and I think that's where you're going to want to be, um, especially early on, um, right now. So I think if he can break out on the lead, I think he has a good chance to go gate to wire. Um, there's not a whole lot of other speed in this race. And this is where I landed on him because sometimes speed just kills and I, I'm banking on superhero to get the lead, um, in this race. Uh, second choice, Equate, is the ass moves and runner. Nice horse, um, but ass and first out is, I think he like, you know, looks at the horse, doesn't expect to win a whole lot unless he has like a, you know, a real world beater. Um, seven to two is a little short. I like to see one from, from this runner, but I think uh, Superhero has a good chance to go gate to wire. In race one okay yeah i landed on uh just ask watts number six and it, it was a company lines play uh crushed it we saw that horse yesterday r run a really nice second by a neck uh got it came back with an 82 after it paired that with an 83 in its debut texas town nice horse that won the that last race too that it exits and greatest drop in the game is made special weight this thing plunges all the way down to 20 and there's no uh, Texas town and crushed it in this race. So I landed on that one with Escobel. It's four to one morning line. The other one that I like is I'm a fun guy. It's uh, turf to dirt, uh, Lasix dropping, you know, just a lot of changes there uh, for Diodoro. So gave that one a, a shot at 12 to one underneath. And we have that horse. We have all these horses on our ticket for the pick five. And, um, you know, the track early on, probably going to be a 
a little bit off. Um, you know, my top pick hasn't run in the mud, but um, I'm not I'm not going to hold that against it just because of the I like the class uh, and the class drop angle and the company line angle a little bit more than just the surface. I mean, if it's running against horses that aren't, it's good. It should wake up anyway. And then the seven exits a turf race. These horses that run on turf, they usually can run in mud. And honestly, you never know until you open up the gate with these. No, and there's not a real uh, clear cut uh, mud runner in this race. So one of them is going to get its first uh, off track win today. Okay. Well, let's move into the second race. It's a 12-5 starter, $38,000 pot for Phillies and Mares. And um, I landed on the six as my top pick. Uh, Wina, Wina Bay, or Winya Bay. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But I've had some success with Norm McKnight uh, running these horses on first dirt that have been working well and this one is no exception it's uh getting first dirt it's working well and i think it could wake up here at a square five to one price and um it should have a late kick in here with a little bit of pace to run at it's got an 87 time form uh late speed and it's skipping around the track pretty good so i'm like hey if he's having su success so far at the meet with this move uh, let's keep that train rolling and and go with this pick. My backup is uh, your top pick, Royal Megan, uh, claimed on the Asmussen barn for ten thousand, or claimed from a barn for ten thousand into the Asmussen barn. <laughs> yeah, Royal Megan looks pretty tough. There is a little bit of early foot in here, um, but I think uh, Royal Megan should probably sit right off save the ground and first claim uh run for asmussen could be dangerous one for one at oakland already one won her last out here uh opening day and it could maybe run in the mud it's got two thirds and a second in the off track it doesn't hasn't hasn't won yet but um I think this the race sets up pretty well for her today. Um, and my second choice here is the 11. I like the 11 to be out there on the lead. Uh, I just didn't like the post. It might be a little wide and could be tiring. You know, if you have a wide trip going around the, the whole track, I just didn't like the post to go gate the wire. Um, it might be able to hang on for a while for maybe, you know, second yeah. or third. But I think... Yeah, you're you're, you're breaking runs. up a little bit, Marco, but I, I, I got the gist of that. Um, the horse is also running well uh, on an off track. It uh, does have a couple of nice seconds on an off track and a win here So at Oaklawn Park. So it seems to like Oaklawn. It seems to like an off track here at Oaklawn. So uh, I'm glad that we have this horse on our ticket. And Escabel's been riding well, as we've said on... You know, numerous. Fuck. We we lost Stevo. We, we've had a little bit. You were breaking up. I was, I, whoop, there we go. Yeah. I don't know where everybody left, but we were talking about the 11, um, likes the track, likes an off track, likes Oak Lawn's off track. And, uh, I'm glad we have it on our ticket. So we'll move on to the next race. Next race is a maiden special weight. These are freshly new. Actually, these are three year olds, three year olds and up. Actually, these are all four year olds. These are four year olds and up. Or every horse in here is a four year old. Okay. And you know what? This one here, um, 
I landed on, I think the same horse you did. And it's not because of the name. No, uh, no. Yeah, Simo Beach on, you know, Orthodox Christmas Eve seems uh, fitting. <laughs> yes. Uh, similar, similar to our, we're missing a, a vowel and a consonant there. We're, it's almost close to our last name. Uh, but this horse has a nice, it's coming off the, the shelf a lot, of, like these, you know, a lot of these horses do at Oaklawn. This one, this isn't an Archie bred race, so that was kind of weird, but a lot of these horses are coming off the shelf. But this horse has a, a really nice race in the mud last year with a big number. And uh, it's been working forwardly for the spot with Donnie Von Hamel. And I feel like this horse uh, ran against some good company lines too last year. And if ready with that nice number in the slop, if it's a sloppy track, it's, you know, early in the card. Might pop here at a, at a good price and we should get every bit of that eight to one. Two races were route races, and today you're getting back to that that six for long uh, sprint. Like you said, you know, you look at that that one uh, the one race in the slop, very big number, and and that one also came off a layoff. So you know, you know he can you know run fresh. So I think that's a, a good indicator of uh, a good run today. Yeah. So my backup was the four, uh, Happy Tears, uh, Deodoro Barn. Um, they gelded it, and I thought the debut was good sprinting. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm like, let's give that one a crack too, and throw it on the ticket. Uh, your seven is Musical Maestro. Out of the Asmussen Barn that came off of a long layoff and uh, ran out. It just got tired. It ran a, a nice race, and it should be tightened up a lot more. I think so. Um, you know, very, very inexperienced horse, but I think uh, I think he's in the right hands. You know, to make a good run. You know, you always you can't leave this guy out um, out of out of anything. So, and if it's forwardly placed, it's going to have a chance uh, to okay. to make some noise, but. But yeah, I like uh, Simovich here. You know, he got some experience cutting back in the slop. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, we have uh, four, five, seven on our ticket. And um, we both picked that, you know, Simovich on top, but we'll see if it can, you know, pop off the shelf, get back to the old number. And, and if it can, we can get paid. Uh, race number four. We both landed on the eight and I singled it on our pick five. And uh, this horse here, one time, 110 Stadium. If I'm seeing that correctly. Yes, recency is what I liked. Uh, we should get a price. It likes mud and it should be running late in a race, uh, lace with pace. Those are some of the notes that I had. Um, I'm glad it. Uh, it did get that that race under its belt. Um, some of these other ones in here, you know, are we haven't seen them in a while. And I think this this one's going to be really tightened up and have a nice. I think you're going to have a lot of keen, uh, fresh horses that are, that might go a little bit too quick too early in here, and it'll set things up perfectly for us with Raphael Bejarano. You know, that's pretty much what I was looking at. Also. Uh... The, re the recency and the pace. Uh, not a lot of these horses ran in a while. Um, pretty much all of them except for what? The one and the two? And the one. Yeah, the, the one who's our backup. The one is going to go. In uh, no the two. Uh, in the two, I just uh, I don't like it. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and it didn't enjoy the off track you know off the shelf but uh anything can happen you know on the second start and i'm not too sure who that trainer is as well and, and it hasn't really been working out that well so i'm throwing that one out but i think the uh yeah the 8 110 stadium should definitely have a 
like a good trip. And then I think, you know, at the end of this race, it, it, it should be, it should be his race. Um, he should yeah. be in perfect position and I don't think there should be any excuses for, for him today. Yeah. And as a youngster, it did well on an off track and it's a debut at Remington park ran a nice little second. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And, uh, let's see if we can, you know, get a nice outside stocking trip there and hope the one, uh, butts heads with somebody else. The one could be dangerous out in front if it breaks well out of that hole and keeps going, but you know, it's going to have to show me at a short price. And we'll see if we can uh, get the single home with our cheap $54 ticket there. Uh, to round out the pick five, we have a $10,000 claiming event. This is a, a race that we scratched out of. And uh, I went with the uh, other California Invader in here, the 12, Bandera Azteca. Has some nice uh, dirt races. Those were routing at Pleasanton and Sacramento. Um, now we're we're sprinting, but this horse has sprinted on the synthetic and has done you know hit the board done well. Uh, even has a win, a couple of wins earlier in the spring. So it can't sprint. It likes to to win seven wins and uh, twenty four starts. And. Um, Drawn out there on the outside, just work out a little bit of a trip and uh, save a little, try and save as much ground as you can and then, you know, pop the latch and go, you know, at the quarter pole. That's my thinking there. My backup uh, is also your backup, the eight charter oak. It's coming off of a layoff from Churchill and ran last year here at Oaklawn and uh, likes an off track. So I threw it in there. Charter Oak has also been uh, working out pretty well, too, getting ready for it. So mm -hmm. that one definitely can pop at a big price. But uh, I landed on the, the six, Spiteful Sam. Um, worked a bullet last out, uh, last workout here, December 28th. And uh, I think this horse gets the lead. I'm just, that's what I'm hoping for. I, I just, I, I think he gets the lead and Mac Robinson gets his first win at the meet. Um, coming off the shelf is a little bit of a concern, but I like the, I like the way, the way that last workout. Came yeah. You're in. breaking up a little bit, Marco, but uh, yeah, Mac Robertson, um, he, he's too good of a trainer. Not to have a win yet over 14, but you know, two seconds, two thirds. And you're right, this horse uh, had a long hiatus, uh, was off for a while. Um, ran in on dirt at Canterbury and then tried a couple of turf runs. It showed a lot more speed last time. And now we're, you know, cutting back even more. And like you said, it's been training really well since that last run. Maybe, maybe like you said, it'll get the lead and keep going. We have it on our ticket. 5 8 12 and um, actually, do I have it on my ticket? For some reason, why is the... Oh, you know what happened, Marco? I forgot to change your... Your top pick is the six, right? It's the six, yeah. And I uh, when I sent them to you... Um, I, I changed it. It was a typo. I meant to hit the six. Uh, the I got gotcha. you. Oh, All right. Yeah. I don't, I'm not on the five. I meant to say, yeah, you, all right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll change our still a $54 ticket. Let me six, eight, 12. Might add, this is my, my long shot player of the day here. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we, there we go. We got it. All right. So the six I had the wrong number there. Spiteful Sam. There we go. Okay, so that's the, the that's the pick five ticket. In. I'm gonna play that ticket for 54. It's cheap. And we'll see what happens. Race number six. Thirty thousand dollar claiming event. 
I landed on this six. Um, looks like we're exiting a tough race here. My notes, it's uh, Walker's win. It's three to one, Scott Becker. And if you remember, I really loved Super Ocho that day. Uh, yeah. This horse, yeah, this horse, uh, Super Ocho was kind of like, I thought, lone speed. And was able to easily set kind of like slow fractions that day. Honestly, for Super Ocho to get away with a 46 half, I knew the race was over at that moment in time. And my thinking here is, um, you know, there's no Super Ocho in here, and maybe the pace will be as fast, if not faster. I mean, if you look at Shady Empire, that horse, I know it's Zia, but it ran 21 and 43 and change. I mean, um, that's pretty quick. And even the other races are really, really quick at Ellis Park. Oaklawn last year, this horse can run four, sub 45. So the two is going to get out and go. And I'm, you know, I don't know if it's going to be able to hang on. There's a couple others in here that can press it. So point being, I think Walker's win, short price, but I think it's going to get a perfect setup in here and, and pretty much romp home when it wants you uh you landed on the 10 we both have the eight as our backup yeah money run i'm just uh looking at is i like the early running style um we probably won't be on the lead today uh because of the two but i think he can definitely be up there right right with him and i'm banking on that he carries this speed a little bit farther than that too and pretty much got to wa watch out for your uh, Walker's Walker's win, uh, Boris. <clears throat> right. You know, for the trip. Because Walker's win does look like he's going to have a, a very nice trip uh, here in this race. Mm -hmm. But I think Money Run could be the one that could carry it a little bit further on today. And and I like some of his back numbers at, at the six for long sprints. Um. And then he's uh, he can handle an off track. He's got a 44 wet wet number, and he's got a win on 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 the off track. Never raced here at Oakland, but that New Year's Day work, uh, you know, two out of 36 for furlongs and 47, kind of opened my eye to and to to look at this horse a little bit further. Perfect. Um, and then we threw uh, Asmussen on as our backup. Claim for 20, coming out of Churchill. Um, it's run a lot tougher before, so it looks like a good claim. Got a good number in there. Lost to a nice horse, and, you know, I'm not really worried about the horse going from 20 to 30 just because it this is a perfect spot for this animal, and I'm sure it'll be ready to run. Yeah, he should be ready to run, and also it's another one who could definitely uh, <laughs> benefit from this from the pace scenario here. <laughs> Yeah, a little no. guest over here peeking over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thanks. race number seven. Race number seven, Marco, is a state bred A other than optional claiming. These are Archie Bread's uh, $140,000 pot. What's up, Otso? What do you like in this race? No comment? <laughs> uh, I landed on the nine horse here. Too pretty. 92 morning line. I just like the fact that, um, you know, it's working really well here. It's run against open company. It's done well here against state breads in the past. And, you know, it's got fast back numbers. Like I said, work tab, mud win. Kind of like everything kind of comes together for it. And I just felt like it's a square 92 and it's a horse that I can. Are you thinking the eight? Bit. Yeah, you oh, did yeah. I break up. Yeah, you uh you're thinking the eight might wire here. Well, here, here's what this eight. Uh this eight is coming off second off a layoff. And I think, yeah, it's gonna be forwardly placed. And it was beaten favorite ran good in the in, in some off track last out uh and if you remember that day rivercrest girl that we had uh in the last race uh that day a 10 to 1 
actually end up catching one way or another at late at, uh, at the wire. Sure. So this one ran one way or another ran a winning race that day. And today, I think the second off, she's going to have a little bit more wind uh, in her. Um, so I have to stay on this one um, right now, especially after getting beat by our other pick. I okay. This is well, a good spot. Short at price, the very least, but... at the very yeah, least I think you're a pace play. You're you're going to be in the mix early in five to two, whatever. But you're not going to have any traffic issues. You're going to be out there, and it's going to be, I think, a catch if you can scenario. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the next race. It's uh, this is a nice race here. Uh, this is a now winners of two allowance. Um, option claiming 50. A lot of these horses are, you know, stakes quality. Or you might see the winner come out of here and run in like one of the stake races. And I like a horse here. Actually, you like it too. That I feel. I, I, first of all, this was my long shot play. And it is again today. It was my long shot play earlier on the meet where, where it scratched. And this horse is three for three on a wet track. It's going to be, it's going to have the lead and it's going to play catch you if you can and, or catch me if you can. And it also, you know, even though, you know, it, it's over three here, those races, it didn't run bad. And that's when it was a younger horse. And right now it's just working so well. And I just feel like it's really fresh and it's training well. It's just going to be tough to run down it's gonna i think it's gonna stay for a long time and hopefully we can you know stay all the way to the wire uh it is a mile and 16th so it's not the short stretch of a mile but it uh it looks formidable in here especially off that last number and it's it was in good recent form before some recent time off but i feel like i don't know that it's been working steadily for a while and then several bullets here so i think this one's ready well, what do you think yeah. about it? I mean, look at the workout pattern here since November. I mean, that is pretty impressive. I mean, you got bullet mm -hmm. after bullet, bullet, bullet. Um, another thing you got to look at uh, to off track, this this horse is three out of three. So it's undefeated on the off track. And that goes a long way. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, you don't, you don't fix what's not broken. Um, you know. I'm going to continue to stay on it. I mean, if it wins today, next time I got, there's an off track, I'm going to take this horse again if it wins today. today. So um, three for three off track, working like a like a, like a a champ. Um, yeah, catch me if you can. Now, there are others in here. Um, it's 12 to 1. There's others in here that look very classy. Um, you know, for instance, I mean, I have the 11 is my backup Highland Falls. It's kind of a boring pick, but it's – Brad Cox, this horse, it's a curling. It, it's coming out of a big number. But I, and it's one for one on an off track in its debut. So, you know, you have that one to contend with. And then um, you liked the four horse is your back. Bear Oak, who just got claimed for 80 by Tom Amos. And it got a 93. It's two for, it's one, two in a row. And exits a, uh, a 10 for a long race out there that race got taken off the turf so i'm not sure what the story was there but it ran well the time before that slop so do you think the off track i think well the do you think the off track is going to drop our odds down or do you think because the our backup picks have run so well and fast on an off track that we're going to get every bit of that 12 to 1 morning line this race is hard to say uh I don't know. I think we may get 12 to one. Cause you're, I mean, you got to look at, at Mac Robinson's winless. Uh, I think that's Eduardo Gallardo is winless. You're coming off a long layoff and there's other horses in here. Like, you know, there's a Diodoro, uh, there's a Joe Sharp. And then you got the Brad Cox, which is going to be hammered. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other horses in here that I think will be bet. And hopefully, right that Ardenwood is actually just overlooked. Um, 
Okay. It's going to be hard to say, but I think we're going to we're going to have at least double digits. Good. Yeah. Well, I I flashed up a graphic. It you know, I, and I, I know you have <clears throat> have one earlier in the card. I, I'll, I'll flash it up, but uh, it was my long shot play of the day, and you like it as well. So uh, I'd love to see this horse just get out and go and and play catch me if you can. All right, so we'll move on to the next race. It is a stake. We both have it. It's the Pippin. And we landed on the exact same numbers. And we have a trip note. We share our, you know, we we both have our DRF subscription. And uh, my, my trip note on here was checked out around turn, lost six significant position, went back and watched the replay too, and it wasn't pretty. Um, you know, this horse likes to be on the bit. Um lost every chance in that last race so i threw it out obviously uh second off the layoff here this horse is going to be tough to beat i think and uh it's nine to two i don't think we're going to get nine to two it's a short it's a short uh it's it's not a big field it's there's only five in here but i feel it's the best horse especially here the best uh mare especially here at oaklawn where it's done a lot of nice things here think this one's me yeah so, i mean i we're gonna get we're just gonna get up get out and go and i, I just here's the deal you have a trip no you're defending champion you're gonna be on the front how the hell are we gonna get nine to two on this horse i mean am i missing something here shouldn't this horse be <laughs> nine to five yeah the odds makers definitely uh definitely uh messed this one up uh, yeah, yeah. This horse will be nine to five, and Missy Veal will also probably be nine to five, eight to five. Yeah, um, yeah. Butterbean, I think, is going to be a little bit of an overlay. Uh, Tis a Macho Girl will probably be like 10, 12 to one, and Ice Orchid is going to probably be like five to two as they go off. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it, there's no way in my world where I see Lovely Ride going off anywhere near nine to two. Uh, it's got a win and an off track. It's the defending champion. It looks like lone speed from the rail. It has a huge trip note. Uh, you know, it's, and I know, look, we, uh, it doesn't, astute horse players are going to look at the pace. They're going to notice the trip note. I mean, we're going to let everybody else know about it here too, but, uh, maybe some people that just grab a form and see a horse finish eighth by 10 off their uh, off a layoff and they're like oh this horse ain't gonna win but come on man right yeah here if you get nine to two on this horse um there's going to be a borrow some money and go to the window <laughs> very very large bet and you know pay your bills for the next you know few weeks i mean nine to two yeah. would be a gift yeah lovely yeah. ride lovely ride should win today and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna play it I'm gonna I'm gonna play a late double and put my pick, your pick, whatever. And maybe I'll sing it. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a late pick five, which I didn't post anything here for late pick five, but we could put a ticket together and single this. I definitely want to get one in. Yeah, we'll like sing it. we'll single this one on a late pick five. And I urge everybody else to do that as well on your doubles and your pick fours and and also your pick five. So that's the Pippin defending champion. Looks like uh, lovely ride should repeat. And we're going to close the show out with race 10. We're a little bit all over the place on this one. It was a tough race. Um, I got a bomb. Working great. Should be prominent early. Uh, it's, again, another Norm McKnight uh, getting on dirt. Now, this horse ran at Aqueduct in its debut on dirt in a tough maiden special. So, and that was at, like, nine furlongs. So, I'm not really worried about that race um this one getting back under blinkers are on or tab is sensational so it's loving it here hasn't run here before but with that hood and with that work tab i just feel like rocco bowen is just going to send this horse and 
this gelding uh, will have every opportunity to wire. They really thought a lot about this animal as a youngster, paid 900000 for it. Now we're just like, hey, let's, uh, and it's running for, you know, this this is a big purse. It's, you know, $140,000. So they're just, they've been knocking on, at the door and synthetic might not have been its game. Maybe they should have kept this thing on dirt and kept trying. Um, and we'll see if it can pop at a huge price today. You landed on the seven, uh, Harlow Cap who I also like is my backup. Yeah, Harlow Cap is, has also been running uh, pretty good workouts here locally. Come off a little layoff. Um, has uh, has the win out, out in California. Um, last three races, I mean, you're in a grade two. The Arkansas Derby didn't do nothing. And then came in second uh, in the little, in the Texas Derby there. So it's battle tested. Um, I just think uh, some of them races, like the Arkansas Derby and the Risen Star, were a little bit too tough. I think Asmussen realized he didn't have that horse uh, with him and ran a ran a really good race in the Texas Derby. Mm -hmm. Came off the shelf now, coming off the shelf, been working good, and it's it's a non too life allowance race here yeah if you remember marco we were at uh, lone star for that uh there was a we were at the contest the uh the big contest that day and i remember thinking man yeah. i need to play this horse and i also liked the winner that day and i couldn't decide what to do and i i did it in exact and i didn't include this horse and i was uh not happy about it afterwards but i i do like that pick a lot uh your backup is rewire that thing uh you know we'll do okay, a pick now. five and add another ticket that thing would be is going to be a complete bomb as a matter of fact that thing might go off much higher than that morning line it might be we might get 50 to one yeah yeah we might get 50 to one um i'm just going back you know uh <laughs> maybe this horse well i hear i like to jockey Okay. I think he's a very hungry jockey. We've been talking about him a lot. Um, horse hasn't yeah, been, like been, been working out pretty good. And, and now he's getting back to a route. Uh, and he might be able to surprise, you know, um, especially off track. He's ran twice on it, came in second once at Oakland. So, um, you know, you're looking through, through here for another horse here to put in. Uh, there's no reason why this one couldn't, um, you know, get into the exotics over all the other ones. And, you know, you're getting a big price here. Yeah. So I think uh, it's worth a shot to add in your tickets just in case, just in case this thing could, you know, sit up close and, and keep running, you know. I think I'm going to play a late pick three. Um, I, I think I'm going to just single six and race eight, single or one and race nine, lovely ride, who you talked about, and pick these three. And, you know, do like a, I don't know, a $20 pick three. Yeah. Well, I, think that, I think that might be the play. Because if you have, just, I mean, here, just imagine if you're alive in the pick five, pick four, pick three, and all of a sudden rewire wins at 49 to one. I mean, you will be. <laughs> And it happens. Well, I mean, we've seen it every every day. We see it at Oakland. So, yeah, there's been some, yeah. yesterday. There were some really good prices, but I was thinking like Ardenwood. Hopefully, we can catch our price there. Uh, we love lovely ride. So, boom, boom, do the double two, and then we'll just, you know spread 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 a little bit here. Maybe go three, four deep here and. Do like a twenty dollar pick three cost you sixty eighty dollars and with two singles. Yeah, I, I would. I would probably on the pick five. I'd probably go deep a little bit deeper in this last race. Um, there's a couple yeah. other ones in here that you might want to throw in. It's a competitive race, really. So. No, it is. Okay. Uh, I did want to mention that you guys know that I like Ardenwood as my long shot play of the day. Marco, you had Spiteful Sam in race five. 
Um, you talked about, you know, you gave us your analysis on that one. And um, that's pretty much it, man. We have uh, Orthodox Christmas this weekend. We're going to do a, um, we're not going to do a show for Sunday, but we're going to have our picks up. We're just not going to have time to, to do it. Very and busy then, uh, weekend. Very yeah, busy. busy weekend. So we'll have our picks up, though, on the website or on YouTube, whatever. And I'll, I'll post it on Twitter. Other than that, Marco, that's pretty much it. A uh, 40-minute video here. Everybody can get their picks in. Yeah, short short and sweet. Um, like, like you said, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, matter of fact, as soon as we hang up this, got to get dressed, we got to go. Um, and then maybe stop at the track, play the early pick four before I head out. All righty. Well, as we like to say, Marco, let's cash some tickets, man. We took a beating yesterday, uh, not looking at the weather report. Paid attention to it this time. Let's well, see what happens. Right. Let's do it. I feel good about today. So. All right. Until next time, we'll see you when you see you. Later. <laughs>